Dolly Parton is one of our brightest stars, and also among the most hardworking queens of country music. Whether it's her many number one hits to being featured in top grossing films, Dolly is both an icon of the screen and stage. Born in a one-room cabin in 1946 in Tennessee, Dolly launched her first single when she was just 11 years old, proving she was destined for stardom from a young age. She made her debut on the Grand Old Opry when she was just 13. She was introduced that day by the man in black himself, aka Johnny Cash. She can play a slew of musical instruments, including the fiddle, banjo, piano, and electric guitar. She's written over 5,000 songs, including hits like 9 to 5, I Will Always Love You, and Coat of Many Colors. With a natural penchant for playing instruments and writing songs, Parton is incapable of reading sheet music, but hey, neither could the Beatles, so she's in good company. In 1981, Dolly got a nomination for the category of Best Original Song from the Academy Awards for 9 to 5. The track shared the same title as the cult comedy film she first starred in as Miss Dora Lee Rhodes, the secretary who absolutely hated her boss, and came up with a plan with two of her female cohorts to teach him a lesson. 9 to 5 was the highest grossing film in comedy in 1980 and it earned Dolly an Oscar nomination along with a pair of Grammy Awards for its now classic hit theme song. The film co-stars Parton, Jane Fonda, and Lily Tomlin as co-workers who decide to hold Dabney Coleman, the egotistical, sexist, lying, and hypocritical bigot of a boss, hostage and revolutionize their oppressive workplace into one that promotes equality. The over-the-top, hilarious hijinks couldn't cover up the film's more resonant message that has simply strengthened in today's era of Me Too and Time's Up. Having spawned a short-term TV series in the 80s and a Broadway musical now running in London's West End, 9 to 5 keeps resonating with fans. This year, the movie turns 40, and we can confirm the news that the rumored sequel has been clocked out. In celebration of 9 to 5's influence and its timely message, the studio demanded a sequel. Considering the popularity among fans, it's not surprising studio heads were thinking of prepping for one. Tomlin shared with The Buzz they'd been trying for a sequel for a long time. They had three scripts, but those didn't match with what they wanted. Unfortunately, it's now been confirmed by original screenwriter Patricia Resnick that the rumored sequel is not to be. Eventually, the movie's legacy was revisited with a documentary titled Still Working 9 to 5, focusing on new interviews with the cast. It's been 40 years now, and the movie is still as relevant, important, and as much of a favorite as it ever was. In honor of its 40th anniversary, we'll talk a little bit more about it in depth. Meanwhile, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to give it a like, and be sure to subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Lily Tomlin initially rejected the 9 to 5 offer. Though the role of Violet Newstead was written with Tomlin in mind, she turned it down initially. Later on, she clarified to the Evening Times that she was shooting The Incredible Shrinking Woman and at that point was overworked. She mentioned she had worked for seven months straight for that movie, so she was desperate to take a break. Apparently, what made Tomlin change her decision was Jane Wagner, her wife, who was the driving force behind reconsidering her decision. Apparently, Jane told Tomlin that turning down the movie offer was going to be the biggest mistake of her life and insisted she make a call to inform Jane Fonda she wanted to pull back her resignation. Tomlin also confessed she's grateful she listened to Jane. Dolly Parton refused to star in 9 to 5 unless she wrote the theme song. Parton may have been a Hollywood newcomer, but she was still a country star, and she refused to star in 9 to 5, her feature film debut, unless she wrote the theme song. Dolly Parton had memorized the whole script. Dolly Parton has reportedly revealed that because of her inexperience as an actor, she assumed it was expected of her to memorize the whole script, not just her lines. The concept for 9 to 5 began with Jane Fonda. 9 to 5 was produced by Jane Fonda's firm IPC Films, and the idea was a brainchild of Fonda's, who gathered inspiration from her friend's real-life women's organization called 9 to 5. It was based in Boston and was an association of all women workers, although initially Fonda thought of the film as a drama. In 1981, she told the Canberra Times her ideas for movies always come from the things she heard and perceived in her day-to-day -day life. Jane had heard some great stories about their workplace, 
She also added she'd been long attracted to 1940s films, which featured three female stars. So she went ahead and made one herself. The film was written specifically with four lead actors in mind. It's not unusual for screenwriters to write movies with specific actors in mind, but it's also not common that the casting process falls in line with the original plan. That was not the case with 9 to 5, which saw Patricia Resnick, the screenwriter, and producer's luck work in her favor. She always had Jane Fonda, Dolly Parton, Lily Tomlin, and Colin Higgins on her mind when she wrote the script. All four celebrities ultimately appeared in the film. There was a 9 to 5 sitcom. Though it was not nearly as popular as the film, 9 to 5 was also adapted to the small screen in the form of a sitcom from 1982 to 88. It didn't feature any original actresses, but Rachel Dennison, Dolly Parton's sister, starred in the role of Dora Lee, which was Parton's character in the film. 9 to 5 was also turned into a Broadway musical. In 2009, almost 30 years after the movie's release, it came back as a Broadway musical. In this one, Tomlin's part was played by Allison Janney, while Stephanie J. Block appeared in the role played by Fonda, and it was Megan Hilty who filled Parton's shoes. However, the Broadway musical closed in about five months. Sheena Easton released her song 9 to 5 at the same time. In the spring of 1980, just seven months before 9 to 5 made its debut, Scottish singer-songwriter Sheena Easton launched her song with the same title in the UK. By the time the song made its way to American radio in February 1981, the title was changed to Morning Train 9 to 5 to avoid confusion with Dolly Parton's famous song. The song, coincidentally, was also Easton's greatest hit. Ronald Reagan criticized the scene where the girls smoked weed. Ronald Reagan mentioned in his diary he had watched 9 to 5 on Valentine's Day with his wife. But the former U.S. president was critical of the scene where the three female leads were shown smoking pot. He considered it to be an endorsement of smoking pot for young people who would see the film. The original script saw the secretaries planning to kill their boss. Patricia Resnick's original script for 9 to 5 was way darker than the film. In fact, it saw the female leads trying to kill their boss. Resnick revealed her original thought was to kill him in funny ways. Have you ever seen 9 to 5? If not, it's high time you do. And let us know what you think in the comments section after you watch it. And before you move on, make sure you click the like button and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.